We are joined by former Howard Government Minister Peter McGoran, who is a Blues fan himself. You, you're dreaming a little? Yeah. Possibly? <laughs> After 30 years, you've got to have some hope. <laughs> it's been long-suffering. Now, let's get to the news of the week. The Liberal leader has confirmed his party's opposition to The Voice. What's your assessment of Peter Dutton's stand? Look, it's, it's a principled stand, mm. but it's a nuanced one, and whether or not it will resonate with the general public who want to do the right thing by First Nations and support uh, their improvement in living standards and political influence and the like. So it's full of risks for Peter Dutton and the Liberals because nothing they seem to be doing is in step with young people, with professional women. It would have been more expedient and pragmatic of, Duck of Dutton to lock in behind the government because there's more than a fair chance, uh, there's a very good chance, the uh, voice referendum will succeed. It's come straight off the back of the Aston by-election where Peter Dutton's name, it, it, just days later... What do you see it from a... How do you see it from a political perspective? The Liberals are in the doldrums. Mm. Nothing's working for yes. them. And it's and they can't just pivot to easy solutions on climate change, energy and so on that nobody would believe. But I just find it difficult to believe they'll be able to get across their entirely legitimate and constitutional concerns about the voice proposal in that the voice proposal, as presented will be a directive to the executive of government, the elected mm. uh, government and the public servants, as well as to the parliament. Uh, it would have been easier for them to say, we have these reservations, we have these deep concerns, and we'll, we'll monitor them and address them after the voice is uh, enacted. But they went down, I think, a very courageous route. Because a number of Liberal moderates will vote and campaign for a yes vote. How will that play out? It's not a good look for the Liberal Party. It shows that they can't lock in behind a position. Dutton had no choice but to allow a conscience vote, even though it defies the usual uh, criteria for a conscience vote within the Liberal Party. He couldn't hold them together. As leader of the Liberal Party, there are just too many moderates. They're not like the Labor Party, where you sign the caucus pledge. You actually have to sign it, mm. that you will lock into a caucus decision of the majority of votes or be expelled. We're watching um, this with interest with polling and the yes vote is, is starting to gain momentum, particularly in and around business, sports organisations, other parts of society. It's every chance of getting up. Exactly right, Tim. It's a good point you make. Who's going to vote no? Everybody's going to vote yes if, if they express an opinion. And many, many companies will sit on the sidelines. The latest polling shows that it's not going to get up in Queensland. Uh, they're, they're only 49% approval. I don't think it'll get up in WA. They're at 51%, but I, I, I think that may deteriorate. And you must have a majority of, of states. So at this stage, South Australia is certain to vote for it on the polling, Tasmania and... Uh, and Victoria, they will vote for it. So it's down to New South Wales. New South Wales will decide this, and you would have to think mm. that New South Wales is more likely to vote for it than not. Now, the budget in May, after the Aston by-election victory, will the government be emboldened to take a few more risks with this budget, do you think? No, it's not an economic reforming government. Um, have, a, have, a, have a look at the new industrial relations legislation, more red tape, more anti-small business uh, uh, wage uh, bargaining systems. Have a look at energy. There's no get real gas exploration. There's no uh, closing down coal stations. This country was built on three great pillars uh, of the economy, Tim. Uh, Low-cost low energy, productivity and innovation. Well, we've only got innovation left at this stage. No interest rate rise this week. That gave a lot of everyday Australians a bit of a breather, but uh, they're going to come. You're right, Tim. It gave, gave uh, mortgage holders a breather. Uh, the Governor of the Reserve Bank wants to lower interest rates if he can, but he's got to wait for some more uh, data on inflation, wage, employment and the like, plus external forces. Let's face it, petrol prices are not going to come down. They're get, going to go worse, if you like. There's a banking crisis in the United States, all of which factor in. So we hope for lower interest rates in, in the future, but I think it'll be a few months yet. What about Donald Trump this week? Um, hmm? Well, when you get New, New, New York Times columnists and CNN, he's a, a commentators, he's avowed 
opponents expressing great support and sympathy for him, you know he's been dudded. So it's a big boost to Donald Trump. This is the nadir of his popularity and, and support in the United States. Question is, can he retain it? Um, I doubt it. I think he'll begin to slide again. But at the moment, he is something of a martyr because it is the worst politicisation of the legal system most Americans would ever have envisaged. I, I heard an interesting school of thought from one of his former communications operatives when he was president, saying that this could lead to him standing down from, you know, running. You don't believe that, do you? No, not a chance. Mm. Um, this will embolden him. And, in fact, his speech when he returned to mar lago or wherever that paradise is in, in Florida uh, was his best for a long time. He was mm. energised and the like. His wife wasn't anywhere to be seen. No, Melania's keeping a, a dignified distance. She always has. When the, the Stormy Daniels scandal broke... You were over there, weren't you? I was over there at the time and, and, and in, in a diplomatic post reporting the Australian government. And Melania mm -hmm. is, a, is a strong character in her own right and she's not going to play the Tammy Wynette, I stand by my man. But she will reappear because she, she does believe and support Donald, but just not at times like this. If I was going to frame a market to see whether Tammy Wynette was going to be mentioned this morning, I, I would not have had it as a short price. Cliché. Whenever... I love it. I used to play it in Hits of Memories 2GN Goldman yeah. 30 years ago. Yeah. But, look, let's look today, brighten the subject. Um, this is going to be one of the greatest Queen Elizabeth stakes. We've got four group ones. Uh, day two of the grand finals of racing in Sydney with the championships. Um, what a race. What a race. Royal Randwick's all about the horses. They eh? forget your fashions or culinary delights. This is, the this is about the thoroughbred, the, the magnificent animal. We have competitors from the United Kingdom, uh, Japan, New Zealand and Australia, all in the Queen Elizabeth. And then we've got some Irish horses in, in the support card. Mm. This is magnificent. Oh, yeah, I love it. I've got part two of... The Gay Waterhouse chat today. And, of course, 20 years since Sunday, Joy won the Oaks. So many elements to it. That's coming up on Racing Dreams at 9 o'clock. Always good to chat. We'll do it Thank again you, next Tim. week. Happy Easter. Same to you and your family. Thank you, Peter, likewise.